In this video, I'm going to show you how to use an azimuthal grid to make wedges. And there's a homework assignment to make a dartboard. So we will do something that is sort of like a dartboard, the beginnings of a dartboard, but I'm clearly not going to finish that. But I do want to show you the techniques involved in building a dartboard on a grid. So let's get started. And as you see, I've cheated again and started from our previous video where we've essentially set up our standard linear grid. And it's a grid that's uh, 10 by 10 physically and 100 by 100 in terms of number of points. And it's centered at zero. And I've set up my linear mesh grid. So the next thing I'll do is calculate a radial mesh grid. RSQ is x squared plus y squared. Let's go ahead and look at our grid. So we will say visualize mesh grids. Subplot will eventually show two by two things. So we're going to create two subplots tall, two subplots wide, and this will be in the first one. We'll use the image SC command and let's look at RSQ. We use the dot apostrophe because we have to transpose that because we're imaging an array and not a matrix. Axis equal tight, color bar, and let's give it a title so we remember what we're looking at. And this is RSQ. Let's go ahead and run this to look at it, make sure we haven't made any mistakes, but we should see a nice radial grid. Okay, now our azimuthal grid. And really this is an angle theta, and we will use the a tan. We could use the a tan function, and we could say y dot divided by x. Uh, let's go ahead and run that. Well, let's uh, visualize it. So we'll go to the second subplot and we will look at theta and we'll remind ourselves that we're looking at theta. Okay, let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So a tan of y, y divided by x. And notice there's redundant information on the left and the right and it's really gonna make it difficult to access one wedge without accessing another wedge up here. So instead, I like to use the ATAN2 function, and we handed y and x. Now look at the theta, or the angle and radians that this calculates. Now every number on this, this grid gets its own unique value, and we can isolate wedges. So that's really good. Now the next thing I like to do, if I'm actually assigning wedges and not really doing angle calculations, I don't really like this to go from minus pi to positive pi. If I was a more intelligent person, I could go with that, but I like to scale this instead. So it's going from zero all the way around to one. And once I have something that goes from zero to one, my mind just more easily lets me know how to scale that in other ways. So let's go ahead and just scale theta here. I'll still call it theta, even though after doing that, it's no longer angle, but I'll still call it theta. So theta equals theta minus the minimum value of theta. So what this will do is it will start it at zero now, but what you'll see is it goes all the way up to two pi. So what we need to do is divide by two pi. Theta is theta. And we could just say two pi, but I like to divide by the maximum value. And really what this does is no matter how theta is scaled, uh, this will always make give me a function that goes from zero to one. So we'll go ahead and we'll run that. And now we see that our, our azimuthal mesh grid goes from zero all the way around to one. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually build a wedge object. So we'll start this down here. Build wedge object. We just wanna calculate a bunch of wedges. So this is how we'll do it. Uh, let's define a parameter number of wedges. Uh, how about seven wedges? Our dartboard is going to have 20, so I will purposely not use 20, although I may plug in 20 there real quick just to see what happens. Okay, so our wedges. What we're going to do is type in round NW times theta. Theta is now a function that's going from zero to one, and we're multiplying that by seven. This is giving us something now going from zero to seven, and then we're rounding it. Let's go ahead and look at what that gives us. So now we're visualizing 
the wedge object. We'll go to the third subplot. We will plot W and we will call this wedges. Let's go ahead and look at what we have. We're asking for seven wedges. So here's what we got. And if we start here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's actually eight wedges, but if you look, these two are actually half wedges, and we would like to somehow combine those. And that happened because that's right where this jumps from zero to one. And so we'll real quick, easy way to do that is to say uh, inside W, anywhere, W equals zero. If we go back to this, notice in this first wedge, that's all zeros. So rather than do that, we'll say anywhere that that's W, just replace it with the number of wedges, seven. So it's going to be, it's going to match this. It'll put yellow in up here. Now, if we run it, now we get seven nice wedges and we have a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, and a seven going all the way around. And we can type in different numbers. Let's go ahead and type in 20. That's what an actual English dartboard would have. And we see 20 wedges. And I'll stick with seven. Eh, you know, just for interest, let's see what five looks like. Now there's five equal angled wedges. Uh, seven seems to look prettier. What about six? Six might look pretty. Now well, let's stick with six. I like six. Okay. The last thing we'll do over here is make something that is starting to kind of maybe look like a dartboard to show you the techniques it would take to build an English dartboard onto a grid, but without actually doing a dartboard. So let's go ahead and build dartboard. Maybe we shouldn't use build. Let's say um, start, start sort of building a kind of dartboard. Okay, just to indicate we're not actually building the dartboard. I don't want to give that away. So we have our wedges. Well, one thing we might want to do is restrict that to a circle, right? Because a dartboard is a circle. So let's define a radius for that. And 4.5 will take us pretty close to the edge in terms of the radius. So that's what we'll pick. So let's make a circle. And that'll be anywhere RSQ is less than or equal to R squared. For aesthetics, I'll put that in parentheses, but that's actually not necessary. I just like the way that looks. Okay, let's go ahead and visualize, and we're going to build this sort of one step at a time. So visualize um, the sword of dartboard. We'll go to the fourth subplot, and right now we're going to visual visualize C, and we'll call this the sort of Dart board. So what we should see is a big circle that goes almost to the edge of our grid because we're looking at C. Okay, so that'll be the outer edge of the dartboard. So what I would like to see is these wedges, but not going all the way to the outside, restricted to where this circle is. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll say dartboard is our circle dot times W. And I'll line up the equal signs because I'm strange and I like clean code. Down in the visualization, we will look at the dartboard array. Okay, now we have our wedges restricted to a circle-like region. Well, the next thing we might want to do is, let's say, double all of the point values around the outside. So we need to create a ring. So our next step is our ring, and there's two radiuses. We need an outer radius, which in this case, let's match the outside of the dartboard. Uh, we'll come in some other distance, so our inner radius will be four. So that'll be the inner and outer radius. Let's calculate the ring. This is anywhere RSQ is greater than or equal to, oh, that's two, sorry, less than or equal to R1 squared and anywhere RSQ is greater than or equal to R2 squared. Let's go ahead and look at what R looks like. And what we should see is a donut or ring going all the way around our grid. Okay, so we don't necessarily want this ring on top of our dartboard. What we want to do 
is double the values on the dartboard inside this ring. So let's go ahead and do that. And the way we do that is we say dartboard anywhere the ring is, is simply two times the dartboard where the ring is. So let's go back to our graphics code and type in dartboard again, and we'll run it. And what we see we've done is we've doubled the point value that's residing inside of those wedges. All right, I guess the last thing is we will add a bullseye. So let's pick a radius for the bullseye. I'll just pick one. And here's our bullseye, anywhere RSQ is less than or equal to R squared. And let's go ahead and look at B and see what we've done. And it should be a little tiny circle in the middle of our grid right about there. All right, there's a bullseye. So dartboard, wherever the bullseye is, I'm just gonna put a number value of, let's say 10. And let's go back to looking at our dartboard. So we're just overwriting whatever used to be there with the value of 10. And boom, there it is. Now a real dartboard it has a, a larger bullseye, an inner bullseye. So we're essentially doing this twice to get the two bullseyes. We'll be doing this twice, once for the doubles ring, once for the triples ring. And we have our wedges, we'll need 20 wedges. The only thing I'll leave it to you to figure out is how to get the correct number values inside those wedges. But I'll highlight this type of line as your hint. So line 59 and 63, changing the number values in those wedges looks very similar to that. So I hope you found this helpful.